I'll never forget being a new grad in the NICU and asking my preceptor, what is a normal blood pressure for a baby in the NICU? Hey, I'm Amanda. I'm a neonatal clinical nurse specialist, and this is my series on YouTube where I'm reviewing some of my most popular posts on Instagram. And today we're talking about neonatal blood pressure. So why do we care about the blood pressure in our babies and our patients? So blood pressure gives us some really crucial insights about our baby that we're taking care of. So it tells us about their cardiac output. You can remember cardiac output equals the heart rate times the stroke volume. It tells us about vascular resistance. You can also think of that as afterload. What is the heart pumping against? And it tells us about perfusion to vital organs, but it's just one piece of the puzzle. So don't get too caught up on the numbers alone. You always wanna look at it in the context of the clinical picture. So always think about also, what is the baby's neurologic status? What is their capillary refill like to tell us about perfusion? What are, what's their urinary output? If you're drawing blood gases and lactates, what are the lactate levels? And that tells us about anaerobic or aerobic metabolism. How well are the cells being perfused, right? And so when we're looking at blood pressure, I remember as a newer NICU nurse learning, just look at the map. Oh, I hit the ma- I hit the mic. Sorry, guys. Just look at the map, and it should be about the gestational age. So if your baby is 28 weeks gestation, then their map should be around 28, right? And that can be helpful. But you also want to think about what do all of those numbers mean? So the systolic blood pressure, that's telling us that maximum pressure from that left ventricle. What is the left ventricle pumping against? What is the force of contraction? Our diastolic pressure is telling us what is the minimum pressure when the heart relaxes between the beats. That tells us about vascular tone and afterload. And then another important component is the pulse pressure. So what is the difference between the systolic and diastolic? That can tell us about aortic runoff lesions, like our our good old friend, the PDA, or it can tell us if the heart is really underfilled and, you know, in the cases of like an obstructive shock, that can be very helpful. So normally, pulse pressures increase with gestational age postnatal age and weight. So that rule of thumb, the map should be about the gestational age. That is a good rule of thumb, but again, think about the context of the whole clinical picture. We're gonna wanna look at nomograms that exist that gives us some information about the context of the blood pressure. What is it? It's a, a range, like when you're thinking about growth and they have a range, whether you're the 90th percentile or the fifth percentile, and that kind of will tell you where does the baby land. One of the big challenges is that we don't have a lot of good data about what is a normal blood pressure. Preterm babies that are in the NICU, will we ever know a normal blood pressure? Non- I don't know. I mean, right? They're in the NICU for a reason. They have lines and everything for a reason. So that data, it tells us information about sick babies but what is truly normal is kind of hard to define. So we use these nomograms to give us an idea of a wide range of babies. There's a lot of ways that we can measure blood pressure. So the most accurate is gonna be intra-arterial blood pressure. So that can be from an umbilical arterial line or even a peripheral arterial line. And that is essential, especially for really critically ill babies because it gives us continuous monitoring of blood pressure and it allows us a line where we can easily draw blood. There are risks with these arterial lines like infections, thrombus, line migration, and then also calibration needs. If the line becomes disconnected, you can have significant blood loss. So there's a lot of important things to think about when we're caring for a baby with an arterial line. Another way that we can get blood pressure is the oscillometric method or utilizing a cuff. It's non-invasive, it's much easier. The cuff will inflate above the systolic blood pressure and it's gonna sense the oscillations and calculate the map. That estimates the systolic and diastolic blood pressure using different algorithms. 
So studies show that oscillometric readings can overestimate systolic blood pressures and they're less accurate when the MAP is less than 30. So that's good to think about. The MAP is gonna be the most reliable number on a cuff blood pressure. When you're obtaining a cuff blood pressure, it's so important that you use the correct size. So the width should be 40 to 50% the arm circumference and the bladder length should be 80 to 100% the arm circumference. The right arm is the best location to gather the most accurate cuff blood pressure. And it's important that we're collecting that blood pressure when the baby is calm, they're not crying or feeding, and you're gonna wanna repeat it if the value doesn't seem accurate or correct. It's also really important that the cuff size is appropriate if you get too small of a cuff, it's going to overestimate your blood pressure. If your cuff is too big, it's going to underestimate your blood pressure and it will be falsely low. We should expect some certain trends over time when it comes to newborn blood pressures. So blood pressure should naturally rise in the first 48 to 72 hours of life. If you see a falling or persistently low blood pressure, you should be concerned and that warrants investigation. You wanna look further into that baby's overall perfusion. Remember that hypotension is a late sign of shock. Remember that you wanna look at the numbers of a blood pressure in the clinical context. So always ask yourself, what does the baby's perfusion look like in the context of this blood pressure? How is my baby acting? What's the urine output? What's the neurologic status? Are there signs of shock? Or are there reasons I should be worried about shock for my baby? In our next video, let's talk about the four different types of shock. It will be somewhere around here where you can click on it. And if it's not there yet, it just means that I'm still editing it. So I hope that you guys loved this talk, this short talk about neonatal blood pressure. Don't forget to like and subscribe to get more of these videos about NICU education. And I can't wait to see you at my next video. Have a wonderful rest of your day.